It is not only the largest lake in Italy and a popular holiday location in northern Italy, but also my absolute favorite place on the planet that over 10 holidays spent here kind of proves. The lake stretches as far as 52 kilometers in length and 16 kilometers in maximum width and are part of three regions. The northern tip belongs to Trentino Alto or Südtirol, the western part of the lake to Lombardy and the eastern side to the Veneto region. I have always been so amazed by how different all these towns and villages both look and feel. In this two-part guide, we will cover the best that the lake has to offer, in my opinion. Which towns and villages are worth your time, where to eat, drink, stay, and how to get around this mesmerizing lake in northern Italy. This is Ponyo and Pool Shark's ultimate guide to Lake Garda. Riva del Garda holds a very special place in my heart, so I'm not completely biased when I'm talking about Riva. In 2015 I met my wife Nadia here, that's one of the most incredible stories I have, but neither one that fits this video nor is there time enough to cover it. Let's just confirm that this amazing town holds a very special place in my heart. It's not my favorite town or village, but I do think it's the perfect choice if this is your first time visiting the lake, since it's both one of the bigger towns as well as a classic Italian town with a stunning old town with narrow streets to fit the evening. Riva del Garda is a town and a comune in the northern Italian province of Trento of the Trentino Alto Adige region. It is also known simply as Riva and is located at the northern tip of Lake Garda. The town is made up of a huge area of hotels that's all connected to the main street or strip called Viale Rovereto and goes along the wide beach. Along this street you will find both hotels, restaurants and bars as well as some food and souvenir shops. This area gives away the fact that Riva alongside the town of Garda is the two main charter resorts that hosts tourists from all over Europe. Most hotels in Riva have pools and are absolutely a town most suitable for families on a charter or for couples looking to get both a tan and enjoy themselves. From the eastern part of this area you can also have a 15 minute walk alongside the lake to the neighbor town of Torbole where you can find a big Lidl shop and numerous restaurants and bars. Both Riva and Torbole are perfect locations for windsurfing and attract surfers from all over Europe. If you walk either alongside Viale Rovereto or alongside the beach towards the western part of the area, you will find yourself in the main part of town, the Old Town. Here you will see Riva transform itself from a charter and surfing resort to a classic old northern Italian town with narrow streets, cafes, bars, restaurants and a huge number of shops and gelaterias. This is the main reason why I think Riva is the perfect choice if this is your first time visiting the lake. You get a little bit of everything and are also somewhat close to most of the beautiful villages and towns the lake has to offer just a short boat ride away. The center of this charming town is found down by the water by Piazza Novembre. Here you can get the boats and ferries for the other towns or just spend your day or evening in any of the numerous bars, cafes and restaurants. If you're not scared of heights, you can also for a couple of euros walk up the tower and breathe in the best view the town has to offer. The Museo Civico is located in the Rocca, a medieval fortress placed on the lake bounded by a canal with a drawbridge. It was the fortress of the noble family Scaligieri who became the lords of Verona. It was rebuilt several times and it was used by the Austrians as barracks in the 18th century. It is frequently the seat of cultural activities in the town, especially during the summer month. Next to the fortress you will also find Riva's Reptile Museum.
Let's just start off by talking about Hotel Flora. Not only is this a very nice hotel well worth checking out, but most of all Flora serves by far the best gelato in the northern part of the lake. I would actually go as far as to say the best gelato I've ever tried in my life to be fair. And trust me, I have indulged in the Italian ice cream more than a few times. This is a place well worth the visit to Riva in itself. Flora is also a great bar that offers good drinks and coffee until late in the evening. Right across the street from Flora is Hotel Rialto, but you don't come here to stay the night, you come for the food. Although Ristorante Rialto doesn't look much to the world, they serve amazing food with a huge menu at a very fair price, which has made Rialto to our go-to spot for great food when we are in the area. If you walk down west on Viale Rovereto for somewhat 5 minutes from Rialto and Flora, you will find yourself at the Crystal Palace Hotel. Enter the lobby and take the elevator all the way up to their terrace to find yourself in the best, coolest and most stunning spot in Riva. Visit during the day to soak up the sun with a drink, enjoy a pre-dinner cocktail before dinner and watch the sunset or have your nightcap here before going to bed. This world-class terrace will serve you as good any time during the day and is a must visit, both for the cocktails and for the view. The year me and Nadia met each other, we spent a lot of evenings in a bar in the old town called Bar Trujani. So much time in fact that we both got to know the owner. A couple of years later I proposed to Nadia this place and became the happiest person in the world. Well, luckily. But emotions aside, Trujani is a pretty sweet bar to soak up an Aperol spritz or Campari soda with some snacks people watching. Its location couldn't be better in the heart of town. Finally, Trattoria La Montanara is a picture-perfect, Instagrammable restaurant located in a narrow alley of Old Town that has been in the same family for a very long time, since I enjoyed my first meal here the first time I visited Riva with my family at the age of 11, somewhat 35 years ago. They still serve probably the best, most authentic home-cooked Italian cuisine you can find in Riva. Sometimes they have Vitello Tunato on the menu, and if they do, that's a must. Trust me on that.
We would like to thank you so much for watching our content. We really put our hearts into making it, so it would mean the world to us if you hit that subscribe button as well as to tell the YouTube algorithm to show us to more people by commenting on our videos as well as to hit that bell button. We make all sorts of travel related content such as alternative, in-depth city guides, travel vlogs as well as cruise and travel tips. Limone Sulgarda is a town in the province of Brescia in Lombardy at the western bank of Lake Garda. It is undoubtedly my absolute favorite out of all the towns and villages alongside Italy's greatest and biggest lake. I would say that it's tied with Malcesini on the opposite eastern shore, but Limone really has something so special that I can't wrap my finger around it. Being completely packed with tourists during the day, the quiet small town of Limone changes its image during the evening and transforms into a calm, quiet and romantic and stunning little town. The town's location is perfect for growing lemons down its slopes, which has given Limon a local fame. The lemons growing here are enormous and can be bought in some of the local shops scattered around town. For those interested in the different trees growing the yellow citruses, Limona's Lemon Museum might be a good choice to spend a couple of hours learning about the different types of lemons. Although Limona translates into lemons, the town's name hasn't got anything to do with that. The name heritage from the Latin word limes, which is Latin for boundary, referring to the communes of Brescia and the bishopric of Trento. The region in which Limone is part of produces amazing local limoncello, which if you haven't tried it is a sweet and sour lemon liqueur that has become world famous. It is also said that the cocktail lemon spritz was invented here, a rumor which I have no proof backing up however. You do however find it in every drink menu in this charming town and it serves as a pretty great pre-dinner aperitivo. Limone is set on a mountain slope, meaning that all streets either are uphill or downhill depending on where you're heading off to. So I guess the bad part is that walking around Limone for an hour feels just like finishing a marathon, but rewards you with a stunning view wherever you are located in town. Also, if you choose Limone as your town and get a hotel here, spend your days by the pool or go on hikes or excursions when Limone is packed with tourists. Come back in the late afternoon and the town feels almost too good to be true, calm and cozy. We're actually enjoying the first real day here in uh, Limone. We arrived yesterday and as always like the first night you arrive you more or less just go for dinner and go to sleep. But now here we are uh, on our way to the city for the first night in town. Here we come. It's when you get down to places like this that you feel 
this is like the reason why we keep coming back to Gerda year after year. I mean, the only problem that I have, and, and I mean, I don't want to sound like rude because I'm very blessed to be able to travel like this, but it's probably that the heat, sometimes, especially if you come in August, it's just not, it's too hot, it's too damn hot. Now it's evening, so it's closing up on six o'clock. We're going down to have some dinner, obviously, but still it's, um, <laughs> for being a Swede, coming from a climate that's like winter time around minus 20 and summer times, like at the tops, like 25 maybe, this is just too damn much. We have stayed in Limone two times and had both our first dinner in the hotel restaurant Le Palme. Why? Well, if the view doesn't speak for itself, set literally on the lake, the amazing food does. And next time I visit, well, I do know where I'm going for my first dinner. Scaloni 20 used to be a house for restaurant stuff turned into a trendy sleek cocktail bar. Using local spirits and a modern cocktail menu this is probably one of the most hip bars I visited around the lake. It's a damn good one though that needs a reservation ahead if you want to indulge in a local gin and tonic pre-dinner style drink on the balcony. She was a waitress from Holland falling in love with an Italian chef from Limone. They moved back to his hometown and Alvecchio Fontec was born. The menu looks very sophisticated and hip, but the food and the service has been kind of bad to be honest, on both our visits. Some dishes nice, some really bad. The last time was straight a disaster and the whole restaurant heard them scream at each other. So why do I even bother to recommend this place then? Well, first off, the last visit was kind of worth it just for the laughs, but also the location is more or less as romantic and stunning as you could only dream of a night to be. If you do visit, please share your thoughts and experience in the comment section though, can't wait to hear it. If you ask Nadia which my favorite bar or place in the entire world is, she would answer Oh, that's easy, it's that bar in Limone which is owned and run by that lovely lady and her mom. And she's not wrong, you know, but why? This is more a cafe serving cake than a bar. There are no cocktails served here, just beers and some aperitivos like lemon and Aperol spritz. There is no music. And still, I think of this place once a week and about how much I miss sitting here on top of the town enjoying a drink with Nadia, looking over the lake in complete silence. I would do it every night of the year for the rest of my life if I could. I can't explain. Just promise me you'll go there if you are in town. Another really nice restaurant set down by the lake is restaurant the Gemma. The view is world class, the food is really good and they have a local cheese plate accompanied by local marmalades that are out of this world. Simple as that.
Hotel Crystal Palace is just the best there is. The rooms are not going to be free, but you can always do pretty good deals if you book a long time ahead of your journey. You do stay here for the terrace though. You will be going home from here realizing that you probably spent 50% of your time in Riva on that terrace. Yeah, that's how good it actually is. Villa Enrica both serves the best breakfast we had on the lake as well as an included salad buffet at lunchtime. The rooms are nice, all with balconies, and the hotel features a nice pool too. Hotel Castel is located in the town of Limone and has a pool. To me, that's more than enough. But when the rooms have balconies facing the town and lake like this and I didn't expect it, I went bloody double rainbow on that shit. This is in my opinion as good as it gets ever. <laughs> This is the most amazing thing that I have... Oh my god! I can't believe it! Was in the morning. Yeah! But also now in the evening we hear music. <laughs> Hotel Florida is just what I said about Castel, but not in town, without the view, and set up on a hill which will literally kill you every evening on your way back, full after all the Italian food you hammered yourself with. It is nice though, and you are paying half the cost of what Castel is. I guess worth dying for? A daily ferry service connects major towns on the eastern and western shores of Lake Garda. The service runs from Desenzano del Garda to Riva del Garda via Peschiera, Shalo and Malcesne. Buses are often a faster alternative to ferry services. On the eastern coast, ATV, Verona's transport company, provides at least five daily bus routes between Verona and Garda, with one route extending to Riva del Garda. Trentino Transporti provides daily bus routes between Riva del Garda and Rovereto or Trento. On the western coast, Saia, Brescia's Mobiality, provides regular bus services between De Sansano, Salo, Gargnano and Brescia. If you're traveling to Riva or Limone and arrive by train, I would recommend taking the train service from Munich to Rovereto in order to get the bus from Rovereto. If you are going to Malcesi, Torri or any of the villages on the eastern side of the lake, instead catch a train from Milano to Peschiera del Garda and get the bus from here. Or catch the train mentioned earlier from Munich to ride it all the way to Verona and catch the bus from there. So, in our next episode we will focus on Malcesine, Torre del Benacco, Garda and all the other villages surrounding the beautiful lake of Garda. In the end, however, it is not about the destination, it is what you make of it that counts. Until next time, stay safe. Yeah.